Lesson nine is on the slope formula. To find the slope of a line segment joining two points, you can subtract the y values to get the rise and subtract the x values in the same order to get the run. So what we've done up until now to find slope um, is that we've been trying to look at rise over run. So we've been doing counting squares. We see two points. Uh, we have a graph. So we would look at the rise over the run here and we would count the rise and get three squares and we would look at the run and get one two three four five squares and we would know that this rise over run is three fifths and it's positive because the line is going up so let's say we didn't have a graph and we didn't have graph paper beside us um, and all we were given were two points so right here I see this point is one two so we have an ordered pair one, two, and we have another ordered pair. This looks like six, five. So we have two ordered pairs, and these are our x's and our y's. So x and then y, and then x and then y, and it's always the same, just like the alphabet. But what we might go ahead and do is call this x1 and y1. So these are subscript, it's just a little notation. So that's x of the first point, y of the first point. This is x of the second point, y of the second point. So you don't have to do anything with those twos or the ones, it's just a little notation to show us which point we're actually talking about. So since I have two ordered pairs, and let's say I didn't have a graph, I'm going to use this new formula over here. So we have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So sometimes um, other ways teachers might write that, they might that write that as delta y over delta x. And those little triangles just mean the change in y divided by the change in x, the difference between the y's and the difference between the x's. The reason it seems a little upside down, the y is on top and the, the x is in the denominator, is because the y is still our rise and the, the x, the horizontal, that's still our run. So this is also just a rise over run formula. But we're going to use it because what if this is the only information you're given is just two ordered pairs? So the formula says y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that means y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And a lot of students have trouble with this. The y's are the second number in the ordered pair and the x's are the first number. So when I do my y's, I would do five minus two over, and then I do my x's, six minus one. And five minus two is three and six minus one is five. So we would get the same thing, three-fifths, just like we would get here if we had a graph. But if we didn't have a graph and all we had was two points, this would be a much better um, and faster formula to use instead of having to draw graph paper. Uh, some students might wonder, what would happen if we did these in the reverse order? So how come I know the five is the y2 and the two is the y1? And sometimes students get worried about well, which one is x1 and which one is x2? It doesn't matter at all. As long as what you're doing, um, you do both ordered pairs in the same direction. So for example, let's say somebody else came along and they said, no, no, it's two minus five over one minus six. So let's try that, two minus five. Those are my y's, but I'm going in the opposite direction divided by one minus six. And so let's say you're doing this and then you see somebody else doing this and you wonder if they're wrong. So I didn't really say that this was the first point and this was the second point. So what if this happened? We would have negative three over negative five and two negatives make a positive. That's three over five. We get the same thing. It doesn't matter. Um, as long as what you're doing, you go in the same direction. If you did five minus two, and you were going from this point to this point, and then you messed up and you went from the first point to the second point, 
and did one minus six, that's going to be a problem. You're not going to get the same answer. You'd get three over negative five, so you'd get negative three fifths. You'd actually get the answer wrong. So as long as you go the same direction for both um, y and x, you're going to be fine. So example two, we'll just do a few of these without graph paper. So example two, calculate the slope of each line segment between points A and B. So I'm saying it doesn't matter if this is x1 and this is x2, or if you say this is x1 and this is x2, it doesn't matter. Um, because the formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, I don't know, usually I kind of start with the second one that I see, and I do y's and subtract y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. So negative 4 minus 5 over negative 3 minus 0. Integers, negative 4 minus 5 more is negative 9. And negative 3 minus nothing, 0 is negative 3. Two negatives make a positive. 9 divided by 3, that's just 3. And I kind of ran out of room on that one. So this next one, if I look at the slope here, um, you don't have to write down the formula every time, but you could write it down once in a while so that you can keep track of it. We're doing y2 minus y1, negative 6 minus 4, over negative 5 minus 3. Negative 6 minus 4, negative 5 minus 3. So we've got negative 10 over negative 8. When you have two negatives, it's a good idea to write that as a positive. Try not to just leave your answer like this. So over here, 9 divided by 3 is 3. So say the slope is 3. That's the same thing as 3 over 1. So we have a rise and a run. But reduce it if you can. So the two negatives, I'd like to not show those anymore. I know that I can divide the top by 2 and the denominator by 2. So we get 5 over 4 as our answer for slope. Okay, so a couple of notes there. Two negatives make a positive, so make sure you remember that and don't write two negatives if it makes a positive. And then always divide so that you have lowest terms. Okay, this one. Let's do this one the other way. So maybe you like this better. Maybe we're going to do y1 minus y2. So I'm going to do negative 1 minus 9. And then negative 2 minus negative 5. So it is a little tricky, right? The x's go in the denominator. If I did negative 1 first and I went this way, I'm going to have to do negative 2 first and subtract negative 5. So be careful there. You're going to have two negatives in a row. Remember, two negatives side by side make a positive. So that's negative 2 plus 5. So negative 1 minus 9 more, that's negative 10. It's all about the integers. Negative 2 plus 5 is 3. So negative 10 over 3, I can't divide those both by anything. I can't simplify it. So that's just your answer. Rise over run, negative 10 over 3. And then the last one, let's go back to the other way. Negative 1 minus negative 9 divided by negative 1 minus 3. So I would always write that out first. It's hard to keep track of all the signs in your head. Negative 1 plus 9, right? Two negatives side by side. Negative 1 plus 9 is 8. And negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. So usually what I would really recommend, if you notice that that is 8 over negative 4, you know the slope is negative. 8 divided by 4 is 2, so it's so much better if you would just write your answer as negative 2. If you can divide the fraction, then divide it. Make it smaller if you can. A lot of students will leave their fraction as 8 over negative 4, and it's just going to make the work you do next year in grade 10 math even harder. So if you can divide, then you should do that.